يا يما يا ابن بلادي عالميدا لكني لا اقسى والقدس عما ناديني يما والله ناديني قلبي حاسس في بلادي قلبي حاسس في ارضي لا اجله الاوطان وباسمه المسلمين Uh, the other thing is, is of course, is the Israeli military um, at this moment and the Israeli state are moving to not only um, stymie and to block and stop the armed resistance, but also the non-violent resistance, which is why we've now seen the arrests of people like Jamal Joma, uh, Abdel um, Abu Rahman, uh, attempted arrests of people like um, Muhammad Khatib a few weeks ago, uh, but he was managed to um, be released. So um, from a number of Palestinians that I've spoken to, they said it's very clear that there is an attempt now to not only um, stymie the armed resistance, but also the non-violent resistance and to basically um, stop any um, activity by Palestinians in opposition to uh, Israel's ongoing occupation. The civilian population that's been starved to death in front of the whole world was then beset upon by one of the most brutal regimes in the world. Thousands have died, thousands more have been injured, and this morning Israel declared a ceasefire. I mean, there's lots of different opinions. I don't know um, if there's been, you know, any massive discussion between the armed resistance or even the non-violent resistance. I know there has been numbers of um, uh, 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 conferences set up to discuss non-violent resistance between some of the groups. One of the things that has been happening in relation to um, the normalisation and the attempt to um, stymie the... Um, the non-violent resistance in particular, is now that they're, um, uh, the PA is moving to set up a supposedly uh, um, a popular resistance coordinating um, body. And the idea behind this, of course, is that um, there will be money doled out um, and that basically anything will have to be cleared through um, the PA. And this is one way that a number of the popular um, resistance activists who aren't being co-opted are saying this is one of the ways that uh, the PA is attempting to co-opt uh, the popular movement and the popular resistance uh, to try and stymie it and take it under control. What will be interesting is to see is how long people will put up with this. I mean, on the ground here, obviously, this, it's been so bad for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years and particularly for the last um, uh, uh, eight or nine years because of the intifada has been particularly harsh for Palestinians. And so the money that's been paid in by the Americans uh, and the EU and other groups like that is being used with, um, by both Abu Mazen and Salam Fayed and the PA to basically try and create this, um, this level of eco what's called um, you know, economic peace, which is basically what Netanyahu uh, in his Bar Ilan speech earlier this year was advocating. He, he talked about not actually having um, you know, a real peace with the Palestinians of ending the occupation, of making sure that, um, you know, the Palestinians could have their own independent state or um, uh, move to, you know, making sure that they can exist without um, repression from the Israeli state. What uh, Netanyahu uh, basically talked about was establishing this economic peace, which was basically a normalisation of the... Um, the occupation and basically in practice this is what you're seeing the PA is doing without saying it they have adopted this economic peace 
by using the EU money, by using the American money to try and establish this. So you go to places like in the biggest cities like Ramallah, uh, Nablus, um, but particularly Ramallah, there's a number of new hotels that have opened up, new restaurants, things like that, which are serving you know the much more uh, elite and wealthier sections of Palestinian society. But then when you come out into the uh, rural areas, uh, you see um, where the poverty is still hitting. Um, it's you know there's still villages that don't have connection to um, uh, sewage, that don't have connection to water, that don't have a connection to electricity. You still go into the villages. You know the first um, day that we got here, we had an immediate call out to go because the village next door to us there had been. Um, uh, arrest in the middle of the night. The military had gone in at 2 a.m. and arrested uh, um, 15 and 16 year old boys on the pretense of supposedly throwing stones. So you still see the mechanisms of the occupation, particularly happening in the in the more rural areas. But you see this sort of economic recovery. I wouldn't even call it a recovery, but this economic pretense happening. And of course, you know, Palestinians have been having a very hard time of it for the last seven or eight years. So often there is just a focus on, you know, trying to um, have money to so they can feed their families, they can, you know, uh, look after um, their land and whatever the case may be. But there is a deep set resentment from what I can figure out from, um, from many um, Palestinians. Uh, I've spoken to a number of Palestinians, particularly over the last week or so, asking them what they thought of the situation and w where they thought things were going. And there is a deep pessimism amongst many of the Palestinians, but there is also uh, a deep-seated uh, anger at what the PA is doing uh, on another level, particularly, you know, the collaboration with the um, the uh, the um, Israeli military um, in uh, in various areas and the suppression of the resistance. Um, there is constantly discussion here at the moment about the third intifada, but people are not quite sure how that's going to happen or what's going to happen. Um, my feeling is is that you know it's going to keep bubbling and keep bubbling as it did with the first and second intifada, uh, and then suddenly explode. I mean, you had a, a relative economic peace between the uh, first and second intifada to a certain degree um, where there was some economic recovery after the first intifada but that of course didn't stop the second intifada happen because the occupation still exists. Um, so I think that's what we're going to see um, at some stage with the third intifada. Interesting enough today in the Israeli media there was um, the head of the Shin Bet uh, was saying that he didn't think on the books currently is um, uh, grounds for a third intifada to start unless some major incident happens and what he was talking about here was continued attacks on the mo on mosques um, be um, uh, something like you know Gaza again or things like that and it's interesting because just here two weeks ago um, there was uh, in a village about five kilometers from where we are where the settlers from uh, Topoa settlement went into the village of Yusuf and they um, basically firebombed the mosque which basically uh, set off the next day a whole day of uh, confrontation in Yusuf, the military and um, that. And what's going to happen is that basically the settlers are increasing what they call is their price tag um, their price tag uh, campaign to try and stop the settlement freeze uh, or any attempts to you know stop them doing what they want to do in the West Bank. I mean, and of course this supposed settlement freeze is not a real settlement freeze. Um, there's still um, buildings taking place and construction taking place. In many of the um, villages around the, the region, it's reported that the um, Israeli um, uh, settlements are, instead of doing the construction during the day, the construction's taking place under the cover of night. Um, so people are hearing, you know, the uh, equipment um, going at night and you know, you wake up the next day and uh, uh, acres of Palestinian land have been ploughed up and destroyed.